In this video, we're going to look at how to determine what type of chemical bond you have based on the difference in electronegativity values. There are three types of chemical bonds. The first two are covalent bonds, but one is nonpolar and the other is polar. This simply means nonpolar is water hating, so it doesn't want to interact with water. Polar means that it's water loving, so it wants to interact with water. And we'll see why when we look at the electronegativity values in a minute. The final type is an ionic bond, which we know is, a, um, is not a sharing of electrons. Instead, it's a give and take of electrons. The first type of bond we'll look at is a nonpolar covalent bond. These type of bonds, if you took the two electronegativity values and you took the difference between them, it would equal to zero. That means that you get total equal sharing of the electrons within the bond in the covalent compound. These types of bonds truly only exist in diatomic molecules. So for example, F2, if you took F2, uh, fluorine has an electronegativity value of 4.0. So if you took the difference in electronegativity values, it'd just be 4.0 minus 4.0, which gives us zero. That means that these two electrons are shared equally between the two fluorines. The next type of bond we'll look at is a polar covalent bond. There is a difference between the electronegativities of these two atoms. And what this results in is an unequal sharing of electrons within the covalent compound. If we go back to our HCl example, we know that the electrons want to spend more time around the chlorine than they do the hydrogen because chlorine has an enig value of 3, whereas hydrogen is 2.1. And if we took the difference between that, it's not zero, it's actually 3.0 minus 2.1, which gives us 0.9. So that means that there is unequal sharing within this chemical bond. So it is a polar covalent bond. Finally, an ionic bond is when the electronegativity values are so different between the two atoms. And this means in the case of an, of an ionic bond, the electron of one atom is completely given up to the other atom. If we look at sodium chloride then, chlorine we know is 3.0 and sodium is 0 0.9. So if we took the difference between these, it's very great. Uh, 3.0 minus 0.9 gives us a value of 2.1. Now to be able to determine what type of bond you have in a compound, you can calculate the difference in electronegativity values across the bond, and then use this chart to determine what type of bond you have. If it's equal to zero, it means you have a nonpolar covalent bond. If it's less than about 0.5, it does mean you have a polar covalent bond, but it's not very polar. If it's between about 0.5 and 1.7, it's a polar covalent bond. And anything above 1.7 is ionic bonding. Now keep in mind these values, the 0.5 and 1.7, they're not absolute. And this is a scale of bonding types. So if you're dead on 0.5, it's not you know, that you're not a polar covalent bond or you're more polar. Or if you're right on 1.7, it doesn't mean you're you know, a, a polar covalent bond or an ionic bond. Um, there is a scale and a continuum within these values. So just keep that in mind. It's not an absolute exact value. So let's just look at a couple more examples then. Um, we're gonna look at whether the bond between these is nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, or ionic. So if we take a look at sulfur, sulfur is 2.5 and fluorine is 4.0.
If we take the difference, we're going to take 4 minus 2.5 gives us 1.5, which would be a polar covalent bond. For calcium and bromine, calcium is 1.0. Bromine is 2.8. So the difference between those two is going to be 2.8 minus 1.0 or 1.8, meaning that's an ionic bond. And that makes sense because we've got a metal and a non-metal. The next one, silicon and phosphorus. Silicon is 1.8. Phosphorus is 2.1. So if we take the difference, 2.1 minus 1.8 gives us 0.3. Technically a polar covalent bond, but it's not going to be very polar. Finally, O2, since they're both the same, oxygen is 3.5. But if we take 3.5 minus 3.5, that's going to give us zero, meaning that this is a nonpolar covalent bond.